Hey YouTubers, it's your buddy Platt. And today I'm gonna to show you how to make a tequila wash. So let's go. In the past, I've done a couple of videos on the fermentation in the whole distillation process. Uh, home distilling's kind of becoming popular so I wanted to kind of touch the subject a little bit. Now, as I said before in previous videos, home distillation in the U.S. is illegal. But in other countries, it's legal. And my videos get seen all over the world. So I kind of wanted to broach the topic without breaking any laws. And so I want to concentrate on the fermentation part of the process. You ferment something before you distill it. Uh, I've done a video on a rum, making what's called a rum wash, which is the term you'd use when you're not mashing your grain. And then I did uh, one on a corn mash slash wash. It's really more of a wash, but for a corn whiskey or kind of a moonshine style recipe. Well, today I want to touch on uh, tequila. And uh, I want to start off with kind of discussing what tequila is and what it is and the kind of the terms to go over think of tequila is kind of like cognac. Cognac's brandy, but not all brandy is cognac. Cognac is a brandy produced in a certain region of France under a certain method using certain uh, grapes or for minimals they use to make cognac kind of distinct from other brandies. Well, tequila is kind of the same way. Um, tequila is an agave spirit that comes from the agave plant, but it comes from a certain agave plant, a blue agave plant. Uh, it's also only produced in certain regions of Mexico, and the names protect it kind of like cognac is. Uh, you will see other agave spirits out there, but again, they're not produced in that region of Mexico. Doesn't mean they're any better or worse, just means produced in a different area. Also, you may be confused with uh, the stuff with the worm in it, and that's called mezcal. And that's another agave spirit, but it's a different, from a different agave plant and produced in a different region of Mexico. Um, what we're going to produce today or show you is just uh, uh, basic an agave, I guess you would call it technically an agave spirit. But I just want to get that out there, the different terms, agave spirit, tequila, mezcal. And again, we're not using a grain. Uh, tequila's fermentable sugars come from the agave plant, so it's a wash and not a mash, but some people kind of use those interchangeably. So now we got the uh, terms out of the way, let's get to making that tequila wash. Okay, so we're getting started on our tequila wash, and one of the first things I want to talk about is the different fermentables that we're going to be working with. Tequilas are broke up into two major uh, categories. One's called 100% uh, agave, or puro, P-U-R-O, and that's where all the fermentables, all the sugars that the uh, yeast will work on come from the blue agave plant. Um, these are the tequilas you think about your Patrons and uh, Don Julio 1942's, the real high-end tequilas. But there's also a category called Mixto, M-I-X-T-O, and that's where at least 51% of the fermentables come from the agave plant, but the other 49 or less percent can come from wherever, whether it's a fructose or glucose, or the popular one is cane sugar. So you're, you have a couple of different uh, fermentable sugars in there, and that's why it's called Misto. Uh, probably the most popular of the Misto uh, tequilas is El Himidor. Still a good product, but its fermentables come from a different source. And that's kind of what we're making today. Um, I'm using this... Uh, Golden Light Blue Agave you can, Nectar. You can find this at most grocery stores, Walmarts, what have you. Um, there's different shades. There's a dark, there's a light, or whatever. I'm just kind of using the mild flavored Agave Nectar. A um, couple of reasons why I'm adding the cane sugar into the recipe. A, I wanted to talk about the Mixto tequilas and that, you know, it's not just this 100% pure Agave that we hear from. And also, this kind of cuts down on the cost. Uh, if you uh, go to like a Whole Foods or something and look for this agave nectar, you'll see that it's not cheap. So this will kind of cut down your costs when doing this. Um, I'm using two of these... Bird loves tequila. I'm using two of these 46 ounce 
uh, bottles of the agave nectar, and I'm adding two pounds of cane sugar. Um, we're heating up right now a couple of gallons of water, and I want to talk about the water real quick. Uh, there's two schools of thought when doing this kind of mixture. One is you just kind of heat up the water to around 120, 140, so it makes it easy for the sugars to um, blend in or whatever and uh, break down in the liquid. And then there's another school of thought that you go ahead and take that mixture and you boil it. Now because I'm dealing with two fresh bottles that hadn't been cracked or whatever, I know this is a sanitized situation. I'm not worried about infection here. And because of lack of water or this is a dry ingredient, I'm not worried about this being affected. So I'm just going to heat this up to around 130 or so and add my ingredients. But if you're using a partially open bottle already or something with a little higher um, water content, you might want to go ahead and bring this up to a boil to kill off any potential contaminants. Like I said, I'm not worried about the contaminants in this situation. But if you are, or if you have a highly chlorinated water, boiling that would not uh, hurt either to kind of kill off that chlorine. I also do want to bring up one more thing on the uh, different type of tequilas. Most of you in your mind are thinking, well, I know Reposado and Inejo, this, that, the other. Like I said, that bird loves tequila. Um, but you also might have heard a term called Hoven or Gold Tequilas. And the reason they're gold is not because of aging or anything like that. It's because they add a little bit of this. Food coloring or caramel. And so if you were to produce this and then throw it into a still and you want that gold tequila, a little bit of the food, little bit of the food dye will help you out. So I've got my water heated up and we're going to go ahead and add the two pounds of sugar. We'll get this all stirred in. And then I'm going to start to add my agave nectar. And while I do this and get this all stirred in, I'll finish up here and we'll come back when we're ready to go into the fermenter. All right, now that we got our solution finished, we let it uh, cool off. We threw it in our five gallon fermenter. We added water, cold water, up to the five gallon level, which cooled the solution down to where we're ready to add the yeast. Um, before we add the yeast, I do want to talk about the agave nectar that you'll buy in stores. Uh, besides, being useful for making an agave spirit or tequila. Uh, it's a great substitute for sugar in uh, cooking, you know, baking recipes. Uh, it's great in cocktails. Obviously, it would work in a margarita. Uh, but a great uh, substitute for your simple syrup in your cocktails or what have you. And uh, adds a, a nice little flavor, especially the amber or the dark agave nectar that you can find in stores. Uh, just... Uh, Gives it kind of a brown sugar kind of uh, taste to it, but uh, very useful. If you have any left over from this recipe, feel free to use it in your cooking. Uh, before we add the yeast, I do want to also go over yeast in, uh, for, for fermentation in these distilling products. Um, in the old moonshine recipes, you'll see a lot of people will just use bread yeast, so that will work just fine. Uh, a, it's the cheapest thing out there, and B, it surprisingly is resilient in the higher alcohol. Uh, it'll produce it'll produce a little higher alcohol and is resilient in that atmosphere. So you can always use that. Uh, you could use a brewer's yeast if you like. Uh, one downfall in a brewer's yeast is most of the beers, like I've got a lager yeast here, most of the beers it's going to work at in a range of four to six to eight percent alcohol. And that uh, is not going to be high enough or doesn't produce distillers want as much alcohol in your fermented product as possible. That helps their cost down the line. And this won't produce this. Now, a clean lager yeast will produce a clean tasting final fermented product, but you're not aiming for that when you're doing a distillation. But this will work too. Um, you can use an all purpose wine yeast. This particular strain of yeast can survive in the low teens, 10, 11, 12 percent, uh, get you the additional alcohol you want. It'll work just fine. And you don't have to stick with just dry yeast either. You can get, you know, one of these uh, liquid yeast. Uh, this is for a uh, high-end or big 
ale strain uh, that will get you in the 10 11 range and so uh, feel free to use a liquid uh, yeast now there's product out there and you can find sometimes your homebrew shop but you can definitely find online that is specifically made for doing this distillation project it's called turbo yeast and turbo yeast is great for two reasons a it works real fast uh, most of our beer kits and home brewing I've done in the past we've taken a week sometimes two weeks for fermentation this will knock it out in a few days also this yeast is bred to to withstand high alcohol levels uh, with the proper amount of fermentable sugars in your solution this can reach 17 18 uh, percent ABV which helps the bottom line of the distillers get more out of uh, the fermented product but it's uh, it's called turbo yeast and you can find it online if you're doing this or if you just want to knock up the APV in uh, your homemade wines or meads or something like that uh, turbo yeast uh, I'm just going to use uh, a pack of wine yeast and we're going to use the whole pack these are made for five gallons and that's what I've got here and I'm also going to use a little bit of my uh, one teaspoon of my Firmax yeast nutrient. We'll just sprinkle in a little here. And part of the reason we're putting this in is because agave is a lot like honey. And you remember when we've made mead before, we've had to add yeast nutrient in to help it work through those really big complex sugars. So let's we'll stir that in. And then I'm going to add my yeast in, and I'm going to get everything settled, and we'll come back to recap. Okay, so to wrap up, we made a five-gallon batch of a tequila wash, mash, whatever term you want to use. And to make it, we use two of these 46-ounce bottles of agave nectar that you can find in any store. And we added two pounds of cane sugar to make the, the uh, fermentables for what would be called a mixto tequila because we're using a mixture of different fermentables. Uh, if we use just the agave nectar it would be a 100% agave or a puro uh, tequila that would get made from this solution. Um, as I described the uh, agave nectar uh, can be substituted for sugars it's close to a honey uh, as far as viscosity and also just sweetness, water. And so kind of what we have here is actually the makings of a mead-like agave wine. And uh, we're going to let this ferment out for a week or so in primary and then rack and do a secondary and let it age kind of like a mead. For distillation purposes, you would let this ferment for five to seven days and then you'd be ready to go in the still. Uh, we also reviewed the different types of yeast you can use. In this particular batch, I used a wine yeast because, again, I'm aiming for kind of a mead-like finished process. If you were a distiller, you would use most likely the turbo yeast I described because it works faster and will give you higher alcohol, which means you could yield more out of this five-gallon batch. Well, I hope you liked this video. If you did, feel free to subscribe down below. Also, share these videos with your friends and if you have any questions comments or concerns you can always contact me on the twitter page well until next time bottoms up